<clears throat> we come to learn and uh, shoot in our first minute, if we don't mention this, uh, we're just figuring it out. You need to know that about us. Um, one of our favorite things to do is to be in this city, among other great cities uh, represented here and in this country. Um, but when you have a fine dining restaurant out in Seattle, um, it is a breath of fresh air uh, to come. Actually, that's ironic, isn't it? It's a breath of, of slightly less fresh air, fre slightly not as good air, um, but it is an invigorating uh, thing to come into a city like this and, uh, and humbling, obviously, to be in front of you. Uh, maybe not obvious, so I'll say it out loud. It's humbling to be in front of you and to be dining in your restaurants and in your hotels and in your establishments. Um, I want you to know that we are learners and uh, we're constantly figuring it out. And when... when when Will asked us to, he's like, hey, I'm doing a, I'm doing a welcome conference. We're like, yes. yeah, cool. Um, what is that? <laughs> and uh, he's like, you know, like the, I don't know if you know Will, but there's sort of a lot of those. Um, and I said, what do, you, uh, what, what, do we, what do we talk about, right? And he's like, you know, cover the future of hospitality. Yeah, the future of all hospitality. And then, like, what and it takes to be a world-class restaurant. Yeah, um, in, in 18 and a half minutes. Totally. Yeah, like, yeah we got this. No problem. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're going to, here's what we, here's our hope for you. Uh, we're going to pare that down a little bit, uh, just, just slightly. Um, and, uh, and what we really want to do is talk about um, maybe some of the strategies and some of the rules to the game uh, that we all seem to be in. Uh, Will said it beautifully. Uh, did, 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 it, did it come out earlier? Because I didn't quite hear it. Did it say uh, it's about love? Did that ever? Was that spoken? Did I make it, it, it Out of your heart, that was happening. Did the word love wasn't spoken. I don't think it was. Skip that. Did, but he did say it's about relationships. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it's true. And I think there's a great tragedy that's been happening in this industry, in the hospitality industry, that we've turned it into transactions. Um, hospitality is not about a transaction. It is about a relationship. And we're just hoping to dive into that a little bit today. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's, there, there's an idea in our restaurant uh, called Rules and, and Strategies, which is really what we want to talk about today. Um, the ideas of the rules to the game and the strategy for winning. And um, just like coming here to New York and dining at the great restaurants in the world and staying relevant as a 64-year-old restaurant, that's a rule to our game. Uh, it's not a strategy for winning. It's so like, oh, what's the difference? So um, Spain versus Netherlands. Who saw the game? For right? real, it's really hard to see. The I'm so sorry if you Siri missed it. Will, hold on, seriously. Um, so at Look, there are four soccer fans in the room, and one of you flew in from England. So it's <laughs> that, is, that is extremely disappointing to me. It was a rematch of, oh, yeah, like, of the former championship game, and 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 at halftime, it's it's one to one, and uh, these are arch rivals, and the whole world's watching. And imagine minus them, right? Plus these four. <laughs> So imagine one of the great games ever. Okay, you know, just go there and it's halftime, and the whole team uh, walks through the tunnel, and you're, it's it's one to one, and everyone's watching, and they and they gather around. Do you guys really, know what it's like to be in Brazil in really a soccer stadium? I gotta slow him down just for a second. Climbing the stool now. Do you guys just like a hundred thousand people watching? Right, it is the world's most watched sport, and you have spent your lifetime <laughs> trying to get exactly to this one place. Okay, and then at halftime. In a one-to-one -one dead heat, you go in under a stadium, and I promise you can hear the chanting and the throbbing and the clapping and the, and the everything above you, right? So the whole team gathers around, and the coach stands up here, imagine it, and he's like, guys, we're going to go out there in the second You're half. You're intimidating up there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hold on a second. What's Is up? your fly done? No. I'm okay, totally. <laughs> no, it's kind of broken. I know. I see. Yeah, I was I'm so in the middle of my halftime speech. I was so speech. embarrassed for you for a second. <laughs> would have been terrible. Time. Okay. Guys, we're going to go out there in the second half, and we are not going to touch the ball with our hands, and we are not going to kick the ball out of bounds. And get this, we're going to keep 11 men on the field the entire time. Like, are we ready to go? It's like, um, like, imagine that. It, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's the worst speech ever. It's the worst speech that's ever been given for a halftime. Um, you don't lead or motivate with rules. Yeah, the, the speech that should I have to stand on the stool? Uh, you should stand on the stool. It's way better. I'll, I'll be the team. Okay. It's good. Should I check my fly first? You're, no, your fly's good. All right, good. I can dark. see you all now. <laughs> Here's the speech you want to hear at halftime. You've played this game your whole life. 
You love the game of soccer. You love the smell of the grass. You love the feel of putting your shoes on. You love the guys you've played with. You're out there because there is nothing within you that doesn't long and yearn to be on that grass pitch. All you have to remember for the next 45 minutes of your life is to go out there and become who you've always wanted to become, to do exactly what it is that you were born to do. If we focus on that, win or lose, you go home to your children and to your families and to where you live, and you hold your head up proud, proudly because you were who you were created to become. That's the speech that you want to hear in the locker room at halftime. And let me highlight two games for you. I should get off the stool the, the second half, the second half of that Netherlands-Spain game, none of you saw it, but they came out and scored four incredible goals. Moreover, they were on fire. That never happens in soccer, right? Those guys were, if you look at their faces, if you look at the way they're playing, if you know anything about the sport, they are absolutely going crazy. A few games later, um, Italy would play England, right? And, and when Italy got up two to one, they did something really interesting. They took all of their players, all of them, and sank them back into the defense. They played out of fear of losing, and they barely won. An entire half played out of fear. In the second half of the Netherlands-Spain game, everyone played the game they knew they were born to play. They loved playing, and they couldn't stop scoring. It was almost six and seven to one. There was a difference between paying attention to the rules and the strategies. And so why in business is it so much less obvious the difference between rules and strategies? Uh, why do we it's mix them together? Soccer. So obvious. And so you look at a restaurant business, um, great food, rule or strategy? It's actually a rule. Um, great service. It's a rule of the game. You have to do it. Uh, beautiful stems or great ambiance or whatever you... Clean bathrooms. Making profit. It's a, it's a rule, not a strategy to win. You can, you can lose money some years. We've and, done it. and we have. We're really good at it. Um, <laughs> and you can still win the game. Uh, you can serve a bad dish. This isn't the how to kick ass in the hospitality conference where this isn't like how to make a million dollar conference. I promise you they wouldn't have us up here. <laughs> it's the welcome conference, right? And there's no way we're going to stand up here and tell you that those rules are the most important thing. They're not. We've lost money. We have. We've had, uh, in 64 years, trust me, you, you see everything. And, and we have. We, we've seen it all. Um, but our, at the end of the day, take a year like 2009, the economy falls to pieces and we made a bunch of probably mistakes, uh, probably lots of, of mistakes and in, in PR and other things and uh, just some poor decisions and it was a hard year, right? Um, we're in a family run business. Our parents are still involved in, in many ways. Uh, Brian and I own the company, but uh, we deeply respect their opinion, right? You think our parents said, um, well done, Mark and Brian? Or do you think they were disappointed in us in 2009? But the, the end of that story is that they were pleased. And the reason being is that the mission of our company had nothing to do with making money. Making money is a rule to the game. You have to make enough. I have to make enough to feed my kids. He has to make enough to pay his rent. We have to make enough to support our parents and our 95 employees, right? You have to make enough to remodel the restaurant <coughs> every so many years. That is a rule to the game. Choose the amount of money you want to make and set that as the rule. Kick the ball out of the bounds, the other team gets the ball. Don't make enough money, somebody else takes over your company. There's not a strategy for winning. The mission of our company is to live out and grow our brand, the belief that we should put other people first by serving and investing in them. Like, what the hell is that, right? That is the mission of our company. We were in the military, uh, uh, so mission actually, actually means something. Um, it, it literally answers the question, what am I here to do? Why did I wake up today? Why did you call me onto base, sir? What are we doing? In Special Forces, it was, let's go down and shrap the drug lord, right? Um, at Canlis Restaurant, 
let's grow our brand. Let's grow this belief that it's worth it to put somebody else before ourselves. Where am I in the speech? You're, you're really good. I'm totally lost. You're not just, on the I'm notes, just going. but no. it's good. Yeah, okay, well. No. Um, my, my notes were different than your notes. It's true. Your notes have lots of drawings on them. I have kids. That's <laughs> no, true. This is the only paper I could find. Um. You see, I got a great picture. Can you guys zoom on this? No. This is the guy. <laughs> this is the guy. The header. Okay. Later, we'll play the header from the Netherlands game. But No, we would say, getting back to kind of our strategy for winning, um, is, is the idea of uh, offering hospitality without self-gain. Thank you. Um, and in our company, we, we defined this idea. Um, I mean, that's, that's what we wake up for. That's us becoming who we want to become. That's, uh, that's us at the end of the day, knowing that what we did was worth it. Uh, that's winning to us. And um, who is, do that again. Winning to us personally, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, say the thing you just said again. It's at the bottom here. Um, is becoming the person you hope you hope to become, and knowing that w what you do at the end of the day actually mattered. In our company, can I can I yeah, okay, do it, say do it. on that thought? When we interview someone, yeah, I know y'all deal with people. Um, can I just share this with you? There is one question that matters. One. We do a lot of questions, kind of like lower them in. Everyone comes into this, this interview nerves, kind of a thing. There's one question that matters. How will working at Canlis help you become who you're trying to become? Why would anything else matter? Because if you can't prove that to us, then if I know that you working for my company is gonna help you become someone you're not trying to become and I hire you anyway, that is a selfish act. I am using you. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt who you want to become. Not what, I don't care what you want to become. I'm a chef or sommelier, great. I'm not here to build your resume. There's not time for that. Right? We don't have a whole lot of time. I care who you're becoming. Pick a hero. P pick a role model. Pick several character traits that you admire about them. These are the ways you hope to change. These are the things you hope for. And if I, your next employer, who you're going to give blood, sweat, and tears to, many hours of your life, easily your best hours in our building for our company, and I don't care about that, I am using you. And conversely, you're using me if the opposite is true. How will working at Canlis help you become who you were trying to become? That's the beginning of the hospitality that we're talking about. It is an other-centered hospitality. It is a true hospitality. And we have six minutes and 25 seconds, and we just got to true hospitality. I know, but it's good. Take us there. So we, we like to define true, true hospitality into three words. Uh, trustworthy uh, or safety is another way of saying that. Um, trustworthy being kind of the currency of relationships. <coughs> um, generous, generous of All self. relationships, like you and your cat. Yeah. Your cat and loves you because it trusts you. Your cat doesn't actually love you. You and your dog, right? <laughs> you and your spouse, you and your boss, you and whoever it is. Trust is the currency of that relationship, I promise. We don't have time to go there, right? And so our, it's really fun. Our parents, um, I can tell this really quickly, but they, 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 they hung this 200-year-old this Japanese door right when you walk into the restaurant. It's a piece of art, but it's also an actual relic when, uh, called a curador where uh, people would store the whole village, their most valued treasures. So if there's war coming or flood or something, the whole village puts their most valued possessions behind this door, locks it. It's fireproof. It's waterproof. It's and the safest place in the and, and, it, and it hangs right at the front of the restaurant. And we tell our employees when uh, they do orientation, um, people are bringing here uh, their most treasured assets. And it's not their money. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's, it's their memories. It's their time. In fact, we have, um, we have people bring stuff to us so precious. Um, and, and they walk in the door. And we, we once had... Uh, we once had these five, six daughters, five daughters. Six daughters. Six yeah. daughters come, um, and their mom had been in cancer treatment down the street, and um, she was going to die. They, they decided to stop giving treatment, mm. so all the daughters flew in, um, and they called us, and they said, We're, we have one last meal with our mom, 
and we're going to come to Camelus. Um, and, and so they walk in the door, fragile and gentle, and they, and they hold it out to you, and they say, can you take care of this for us? Um, that is what a guest does when they walk into your establishment. Don't think otherwise. I mean, maybe short term you want to do that. But after 65 years, I'll tell you this. That is what they want. They want to be safe. What they bring you is more valuable than you can possibly imagine. And how dare us put ourselves in the spotlight? Ironic, because I'm in one. <laughs> but I, I'm trying to take it off me and put it on them. The mom died two weeks later. I met all those, I met all those sisters, right? The reason we have a world-class chef and a famous wine list and incredible views and go through all the hooplas that all y'all go through is so that maybe in that moment we might honor that dinner. God, if I read one more review that talks about food for 95% of the, of the word count, it'll kill me. Please don't reduce my wife and I's one night out to the composition on a plate, right? You all know this. You feel this. The reason we go out, for many reasons, but over the long haul, what people want is this kind of hospitality. The other two words, quickly, are generous and other-centered. Those three words, trustworthy, generous, and other-centered, they, they mean everything to us. And I'm not talking about with the staff, they need to be generous with their money. It's generous with who they are. It's generous with themselves. It is literally a carving out of space. If we look at the word, and there's all sorts of different Latin and Greeks of hospitality, look at hospitalitas, right, more or less the Latin. It implied something really interesting. It didn't just mean to take someone in. It meant to take in a stranger. This was not a convenient thing, and it was not a safe thing. The onus is on you, right? It's a very vulnerable thing, especially back then, pre-911, to bring a stranger in. The Celtic root of that word actually implied that not only would you bring them in and house them, you would actually defend them. You would actually go to battle for this person that you don't know. When I say be generous, I'm saying to my staff, you've got to carve out before service some amount of space for whatever it is they bring to you. You don't know what that is. In other-centered, we all know the difference, right? There's self-centered and there's other-centered. And if you're not there to serve me tonight, who are you there to serve? Yourself. It doesn't feel good. In fact, it feels a lot like prostitution. It goes like this. I'll give you what you want. You pay me. Isn't it? I'll be nice to you at the table. I'll go through all the, I'll go through the whole deal right here for you. I will pretend like you are the center of my world, right? But there's no generosity there. There's no space carved out there. There's nothing. I'll give you what you want. I'll make your world, every, just pay me. That person, that server didn't show up. I'll never forget my dad stood me in the back of the dining room once and he, and he said, you need to learn how to look at the dining room from the guest's perspective. And he made me stare at a table and he said, what do you see? And I said, it needs water and it needs to be crumbed. And he said, no. He goes, what do you see? Keep looking. And I looked and I looked. And I said, the, guy's, the guy looks really nervous. That's why his water's so empty. And he's not wearing a really nice coat. So he feels like he doesn't belong. And uh, I think he needs help. And he's like, no, no. Um, yeah, and it's like, well, no, like, what, what do you see? And so um, to keep looking, to actually learn to see the dining room from the guest perspective uh, is the most beautiful. I see a guy on a blind date who's nervous, who needs water. He's sweating it, right? You got to see the guest for who they are. Yeah. Hey, we didn't make this stuff up. Um, down the road, <laughs> you all are privileged to be in an incredible city, or those of you who live here. There's a poem written on the base of the Statue of Liberty. We didn't title this speech, goofy title for nothing. And we just thought we'd, we'd close by reading it to you. Um, this is your heritage. This is the, uh, uh, to, be, to be frank about it. Um, Land of the Free, Home of the Brave, was founded on this. It's written by Emma Lazarus. And it's written in bronze in the base of the Statue of Liberty. It's called the New Colossus. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here, at our sea-washed sunset gates, shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. 
Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. What's so awesome is that every one of us has this lamp actually in your pocket. If you work with people, you have that lamp. And when you raise it, it's, it's a terrible and frightening thing because it not only illuminates and welcomes people, it actually illuminates yourself. Uh, and it's hard and it's scary um, and it's vulnerable. But it's hospitality. It's the kind the country was founded on. It's the kind that the word speaks to. It's the kind that I believe we'll see again and need to see again and need to see more of. The imprisoned lightning is that woman's welcome to the world. Not to that was convenient, but to anyone that would come, right? We were inspired by it. We're humbled and inspired by all of you. I had an enormous privilege to be here. Thanks for having us.